Michael, do me a favor, stop post posting verses. Please do me a favor, talk to someone else because 4.129 is gonna backfire against you, you're gonna embarrass yourself. Because if you read 4.127, in fact, Michael, here, let me, let me take the bait. Michael, why was chapter four, verse 127, 128 revealed? You conveniently went to 4.129, but do you know why 4.127, 128 was revealed? Guys, bear with me. I know people will be watching this on YouTube, right? They're gonna be watching this on YouTube. <clears throat> And they're going to wonder, why am I interacting with someone in text? For those watching on YouTube, Michael is a Muslim who's not listening to the arguments and bringing up objections that are actually doing more damage to his cause than good. Michael, quickly, because I swore I wouldn't interact with you, but again, I am weak in the flesh. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. <clears throat> Do you know why 4127-128 was composed, Michael? Quickly. Because you went to 4129, but you didn't mention 4127, 128. Why was it composed? Do me a favor, Jonathan, if you guys don't mind, let's, let me take care of this red herring. Red herring. This red herring, let me chase after it. Right? And by the grace of Jesus, obliterate it. Jonathan, do me a favor. Read 4127, 128. <clears throat> 4127, 128. Okay. Are you there, Michael? Uh, Jonathan? Sorry. Did we lose Jonathan? Wow. Is he gone? Sorry. <laughs> My microphone is muted. Sorry. I've got um, Sir 4 verse 127. Um, and they request from you, O Muhammad, a legal ruling concerning women. Say, Allah gives you a ruling. Louder so you can hear you slowly, slowly louder. Guys, pay attention to 4127, 128, and louder so we can hear you. Guys. It seems like you're far away. Sorry. And they request from you, O Muhammad, a legal ruling concerning women. Say, Allah gives you a ruling about them and about what has been recited to you in the book concerning the orphan girls to whom you do not give what is decreed for them, and yet you desire to marry them, and concerning the oppressed among children, and that you maintain for orphans their rights in justice, and whatever you do of good, indeed of Allah, is ever knowing of it. Um, and then 128. Now, guys, pay attention to 128. Please, for the Christians here, you need to know this, and you can back this up by looking at the commentaries, such as Ibn Kathir, for confirmation. Read this. And if a woman fears from her husband contempt or evasion, there is no sin upon them if they make terms of settlement between them. And settlement is best. And present in human souls in stinginess. But if you do good and fear Allah, then indeed Allah is ever with what you do acquainted. Now, did you catch that? Start verse 128 and a little louder. It's like when you're reading, it's like your voice fades. Notice what 128 says. If the women fear desertion, desertion, read that again. If a woman fears from her husband contempt or evasion, there is no sin upon them if they make terms of settlement between them. Okay, now let me explain the reason. Guys, according to the commentaries, this passage for 128, where it says, if a woman feels, fears that her husband will hold her in contempt or desert her, there is no blame on either one of them if they come to mutual agreement. Do you know why this passage was composed according to the Muslim sources? Now, many of you know it, because some of you mentioned it. According to the commentaries and the Sahih Hadiths, Muhammad wanted to divorce Sauda, one of his wives. Sauda because the Hadiths say and the commentaries say she was old and she was a huge fat lady. These are not my words. These are the words of Bukhari. Muhammad wanted to divorce her. She came to Muhammad and says, please do not divorce me because I want to be one of your wives on the day of judgment. But I'll make a deal with you. If you keep me as your wife, you don't have to visit me anymore. On the day in which you used to visit me, I assign it to Aisha. Muhammad says, okay, if that's the deal, you know what? You'll stay my wife, but I won't visit you. So according to the Hadith traditions, Aisha would have two days of visitation, whereas the rest of the wives would only have one day, and Sada had no days. Did you guys catch it? And Muhammad is supposedly a prophet of mercy. Where is the mercy? Sauda is old and says she's a huge fat lady. Muhammad wants to divorce her. 
She gets afraid, she panics. She says to Muhammad, please don't divorce me. I'll make a deal with you. Keep me as your wife, but you don't have to visit me anymore. The day in which you used to come visit me, the day allotted to me, I give it to Aisha. And Muhammad says, great, I accept. So this passage came down to approve of what Muhammad did. This passage came down to approve of what Muhammad did. And you're telling me this man is a prophet of mercy? Or is this man an agent of Satan <clears throat> wrecking havoc and misery on human lives? So Michael, I think it's best for you just to sit down and be quiet because every passage you bring up, it only ends up further embarrassing you and exposing Muhammad. So do your prophet a favor and don't do him any favors and stop trying to defend the indefensible. Wake up, smell the roses, and come to Jesus, the only hope of salvation.